Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe and today I want to talk about the 2017 MacBook Pro. Now the reason I'm doing this video is because I did a video on the 2016 MacBook Pro um, and I got it right when it came out and I was kind of shocked that I got around about 300,000 views on that video thousands of comments um, and of course the 2016 I returned it if you haven't seen the video check it out I gave all the reasons why I returned it so I'm not going to go over all that detail again in this video but um, I wanted to stay in the Apple ecosystem so I got the 2017 because I needed to get a new laptop when I got the 2016 I knew I wanted to wait for the next version because it was just too many faults too many problems in this so at that time, they only had the sixth generation Intel processor, which was called Skylake. KB Lake had already been released, but Apple had neglected to put that into the 2016. So I decided I would wait for the next version and, you know, just too many problems. And so here we go. Here's the 2017 MacBook Pro. I've had it for two and a half months now. People have been asking me what I thought of it. They've been wanting me to do a review, uh, but I decided I was going to wait until I really got used to it and really put it through its paces. So here we are two and a half months into it. My fear was, you know, I'm going to come out and do this video now. I'm going to say it's great. People are going to say Apple has paid me to say it. If I say it sucks, people are going to be like Dell's paid me to say it. So there's this huge, you know, Apple versus PC. And that's not what I'm getting into because I have other Apple computers. I also have other PCs. Okay, so the things that I liked and didn't like about this, let's talk about those before versus now. Okay, so my big problems I had with this, one was a touchpad. This huge aircraft carrier size touchpad. Um, you're always bumping it with your wrist and uh, when typing was having issues. Now, I mentioned that, that the palm rejection wasn't very good. I've noticed the palm rejections got a lot better. And it was a lot of comments I had on there about that, you know, like, uh, you know, do this, do that, um, you know, doing it right, whatever. But now I notice if I'm typing, I'm not resting my palm on there. So I'm typing like this, but what happens if I just gently brush it? Sometimes your palm of your hand will just gently brush that and that's not something that has anything to do with clicking or anything like that. It's not something you can turn off. It's actually just gently using that. And then what happens is it moves the cursor. So you're typing and suddenly your sentence gets jumped. Your cursor gets jumped and you're continuing typing. And it becomes a puzzle game to figure out what it was, even what you were typing, let alone other people. So I can't just sit the enter key. I, I look like a complete idiot if I do that. So I always have to check now before sending anything because sometimes it becomes jumbled or scrambled. So, you know, if you like those kind of scramble games, uh, this is great. You're, you're really going to enjoy this. Um, okay, the keypad, the keypad, the butterfly keys. Not a fan. Never liked the butterfly keys. On the 2016, you know, they were just so tacky and cheap. Feeling and sounding, they were too noisy. On the 2017, uh, one of the things they did is they've introduced Butterfly 2, which is, you know, the original had the butterfly. These are the Butterfly 2 keys. I still don't like them as much as I liked the ones before. However, they're a lot better than the first one. They don't sound so noisy and you don't hear this click, 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 click thing going all the time when you're typing. So I definitely like the keypad better. It's possible. Um, do I say it's wonderful? Do I give it a raving review? No, but I do say it passes. The keys pass. Um, the ports, dongles, dongle gate. Okay, so one of the things I supported was a Kickstarter project, and I never do Kickstarter, but I did Hyperdrive. And this actually arrived uh, right after I returned my 2016, is this. So fortunately, I was set to go for the 2017. Now, I tried the Saatchi one before, and it fried a micro SD card and almost broke the first time I used it. It was cheap plastic. And a problem with a lot of these drives that were kind of similar to this is they have one pin. This one has two pins. So that does two things. One, when you plug it in, you don't lose any ports. You can still charge through one, and you still have a USB-C port on here as well, you know, Thunderbolt 3, same thing. But you don't lose any ports. You still get the two ports. But the other thing, because it's got two ports on there, it's stable. It holds on there and it doesn't feel like it's wobbling around and ready to snap off. Um, and what this has got on there is pretty good. It's got a 
HDMI, 4K HDMI out. This thing's 50 megabits per second, so it's really fast. You're not losing any speed. It also has the 400 watt power, so you're not losing any power when you're charging. It's the same full power. It's got two USB 3 slots on there, and it's also got an SD and a micro SD card reader. So we're good to go. So this does solve having to carry that bag of dongles around all the time. So now you can just carry this one device and, uh, and you should be good to go. And then there's dongles for other things, but that's nothing new, we're used to that. So battery life. One of the things that really threw this over the cliff for me last time and made me want to return it was the fact that the battery was only lasting barely two hours. And Consumer Report actually gave it a failing grade for the first time ever for a MacBook Pro uh, because of that battery. Well, Apple kind of jumped in there and did some firmware updates and did some things like that and fixed that. So I guess there was some kind of a leak in the battery that was not in the battery, but in the computing that was causing the batteries to drain very quickly. So they did fix that. And I've noticed in this one, the battery life is better. Now, it's not as good as my old one. I think my 2011 actually had better battery life than this, but this is certainly better than the 2016 model. Uh, the other thing, the touch bar, Never had a problem with the touch bar. I like that. I like the bright screen. I like the speakers, um, the weight and everything like that's great. It's light, it's portable. Um, one thing I really do like though is this fingerprint button. So when this goes to sleep, I just put my finger in there. It wakes up. I don't have to type in a password all the time. Also works with my one password app. So when I'm browsing the web or whatever and I need to enter passwords, I can just do it with my finger. It's great. I love that. It's really wonderful. So very happy with that. So anyway, um, here I am. I've got the 2017 MacBook Pro now. And what's my verdict? Well, I didn't return it. I decided to keep it. I'm not in love with it, but I don't hate it. I think there's you know, a lot of things Apple could have done better. Um, I'd like to have seen more performance increases you know, since you know, the last six years. Um, especially for the money, although I did get this one a little bit less money. I think it was $200 less than the other one. And I have a 3.1 processor versus a 2.9. Um, so I am seeing some speed gains on here. The performance is fine. Not complaining about the performance here. Um, I would definitely say it's worth a buy now. I wouldn't say rush out and buy it, you know, get rid of your old one. But, you know, if you do need to upgrade your MacBook Pro, um, I feel like now it's safe to upgrade it this is going to do the job for you. It's not going to let you down. Um, I'd love to say, you know, this thing is amazing. Um, but, you know, it's it's not. I don't like the touchpad. I don't like the keys. Those are things I'm just going to have to live with. But um, as far as I'm concerned, though, you know, this is going to be my everyday travel computer. And uh, it's going to get the job done. The Apple is my main work system. It's my main uh, ecosystem that I'm in. I'm very happy with it. Um, although, you know, I, I will mention there are some things with Apple that are starting to bug me a little bit. Like, you know, remember back in the days with the PCs and you would have all these things popping up all over the screen and that Apple needs to be a little bit careful because they're starting to go down that road. I'm finding that these uh, the notifications popping up all the time are kind of really distracting when I'm working and there's no way to really turn them off. You can turn them off for one day but you can't like turn them off permanently. So here's a little hack or a little trick that I, I just kind of figured out would work. What I do is I put it to sleep because you can set a do not disturb time. So I set the do not disturb for 23 hours and 59 minutes. So those notifications are actually only gonna work for one minute a day. Of course you turn on, it's you know, like brrr, they're all over the place. Um, I find them incredibly annoying, distracting. It should be an option to turn it off. Um, that's one thing I found annoying, and, and while we're at it, you know, the iPhone, they push so hard for these updates, right? So, you know, they have an update, and it comes up, and it, in, it interrupts you like right in the middle of whatever you're doing. It's like, boom, you know, update now, and you can't say never. You can say, you know, remind me again in a day, or update now. That's all you get. So, Apple, back off. Stop being so pushy with your notifications, your upgrades. We will upgrade when we are good and ready, okay? So, you know, just don't do that. It's very annoying. So that's it, guys. I hope you liked the video. If you're not a subscriber to Photoshop Cafe, become a subscriber. Hit the subscribe button right now. I do a lot of tech reviews. I do Photoshop and Lightroom tutorials 
and uh, I'm doing it at least once a week. Lately, I've been doing three or four times a week. Um, so you'll get a notification whenever I create new content. If you are subscribing, you see that little bell thing there and you didn't click on it, click on that and you'll get all the notifications when I do the new tutorials. I appreciate all the comments um, and if you wanna add some comments on here, please go ahead. Um, if you like this video, hit that like button. In fact, pound it into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.